Hello, uh, I'm Joseph Alpert, the Editor-in-Chief of the American Journal of Medicine, and uh, I'm here, as I am every month, to sort of point out what I find is a particularly interesting article to take a look at. The one that I'm interested in for this month um, is from Bukritz and, and uh, co-workers in Israel, where they compared the diagnostic accuracy of looking for uh, infection sources in patients with fever of unknown origin, um, comparing the CT scan uh, to the PET scan CT. Um, you know, the PET scan CT uses a radio labeled glucose. Um, and it's picked up uh, by uh, white cells and inflammatory cells wherever there's inflammation or infection or, or cancer. Um, and so uh, it, it turned out uh, that uh, the PET scan was considerably um, more uh, uh, informative compared to the, to the plain uh, CT scan, um, and that it picked up about 75% more infections uh, than, the, than the ordinary uh, CT scan. Um, now, the problem is, of course, that the radioactive isotope um, um, is very short half-life, so it has to be delivered from a cyclotron and so forth. So uh, some areas may have a hard time having a, a PET scan. Um, but in any case, uh, um, like with most uh, high-tech things, I'm sure it'll get cheaper and quicker and easier. Uh, and uh, 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 we recently had a patient with infectious endocarditis, or well, at least had uh, bacteria streptococcus in the blood, 10-year-old uh, uh, implanted valve, and the valve by echo looked thickened, and we couldn't be sure. And then we did the PET scan, and sure enough, the valve uh, uh, lit up, and there was an abscess, and it made the diagnosis when all the other studies, MRI and CT, didn't do it. So this is a, a, an excellent uh, study, uh, and I hope you'll all read it. Stay in touch with us through all of our social media, and I'll be talking with you again next month.